Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back. It is episode three of my new season where I'm converting my basement into a man cave. And on today's episode, I'm going to be showing how I made this awesome segmented lamp on my lathe. And the whole thing is sponsored by Hudson Lighting. They make a lot of really cool lighting products like these LED Edison bulbs I'm using specifically for this project and this very cool flame effects bulb that you can even turn upside down and it'll change its orientation. Very cool stuff and they even partnered with an organization called Watts of Love and a portion of every purchase goes towards that organization. So more information on that and links on where to buy all these products are in the description below and you can even use this coupon code to save 20% off your order. I have a really cool project lined up specifically for this bulb coming up in a few episodes, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get started on this project. So like I said earlier, this is a beginner's guide, but also uh, I wanna note that this isn't a tutorial on a lathe or how to use lathe tools. I already assume that you've used them before and you're ready for a fun project, but uh, this is gonna be a very honest, one cut walkthrough type of tutorial. So pair with me and uh, let's get started. So the woods that I'm using are oak, cherry, and maple. And they range in shape and size, but what's most important is cutting them to length. And you don't wanna cut them any longer than what your lathe can handle. My lathe can only handle about 18 inches, so that's what I'm gonna shoot for. And they're also pretty thick, so I'm gonna thin them down by cutting them uh, like this. If you have a bandsaw, that is ideal. I do not have one, so I have to cut them like this. You'll see my, my blade can only go up so high, so I flip the piece over and then uh, finish off the cut. Just be very careful when you do this. So the sizes that I'm cutting all of these aren't necessarily important. Uh, just make sure no matter what you have, it's symmetrical on both sides of your middle piece. And I soon realized the two little end pieces on the sides I don't actually need to make my circle. They don't really fit. but. If I had to give a thickness to any of these, it's around half an inch on each one, except for those really thin ones, which is about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more. The measurements you do want to focus on, though, are how wide your boards are. The wider you go, the larger the circle's going to be, uh, but in my instance, some of these boards are a little too wide, so I'm just going to thin them out a little bit. Now this next step is optional as you can just use a sander for this, but I'm running these through my thickness planer to make sure they have a nice even surface for when I glue them together. But once they're all nice and even, I can start gluing them up. And a tip for this is grab one of these $1 Betty Crocker uh, basting brushes from your local dollar store and it's really good for spreading around glue. But in order to keep these from wiggling around as I clamp them down, I'm actually gonna forcefully push it around until it catches and cohesion has a little bit of clamping on itself so it doesn't slide around. It's much better than using salt, which I've heard of other people doing. That is not a good idea. But once you're ready for clamps, I'm using quick clamps just to hold it in place for a little bit until I put on these much stronger clamps. And the more the merrier. Um, every surface is clampable, so use as many as you have, especially for this many pieces of wood. Um, but once that's all done, I'm just going to take them off and square up the ends, which will give me a nice, clean, even surface to mount the faceplate to, uh, which besides the tailstock is the only component you'll need to mount the wood onto the lathe. Uh, you won't need a special chuck or device or anything like that. Uh, in order to mount this and keep it center, I'm just drawing uh, corner to corner on the middle piece to find the center point, and then using a compass to draw a circle, and then uh, just centering the faceplate within the circle. And I'm using four screws here. Uh, they don't have to be too long just because I am going to mount this in between uh, the headstock and the tailstock and that'll wedge it in there pretty nicely and securely so I won't have to worry about it flying off or going anywhere. But with mounting this up just make sure it's as tight as possible. Everything's fastened down. You don't have anything in the way. Everything's clear of the uh, spinning component and uh, roll up your sleeves put on some safety glasses and I'm putting on this mask as well on top of my safety glasses so that'll protect the rest of my face but perfect example of why you need that protection is if you're like me and you have really inexpensive tools uh, they they have a higher risk of just snapping off just like that so you never know where that tool tip is gonna go so definitely be safe but the reason behind that may have been uh, because I was going in at a pretty steep angle which is not something you would typically do and it was probably very dull. They go dull very easily. Uh, maybe it wasn't hardened correctly or tempered correctly, but nonetheless, uh, what you would typically use to get started uh, roughing out a shape is the roughing gouge. So uh, unfortunately, the same thing happened to my roughing gouge, so the next best option I had was coving bit. It's the one tool I have that's really efficient at roughing out a shape. 
just as long as it's sharp. So you'll see I am going at a much more even level as opposed to an extreme angle as I did earlier, just because now that it's sharp, it's much easier to cut out a shape. Uh, but again, please use lathe safety. You see me not rolling up my sleeves here. It is a very good idea to roll up your sleeves or not have any sleeves at all. Uh, I definitely recommend a checklist. Uh, you see how I have a little American flag there behind the lathe. Somewhere right there, you can have a very bold and visible safety checklist of what you should do before you even turn on the lathe. But uh, until then, I'm just trying to rough out a cylinder here that's even from top to bottom. And to help with the overall shape, I'm just gonna occasionally lay on a uh, very flat surface like that to check for any high spots or low spots, but that's pretty much it. But anyway, this is ready for the first uh, sectional cut or segmented cut, however you wanna say that. And the overall length is 17 and a quarter inches and the blade I'm using, it is an eighth of an inch thick. Always take into account the thickness of the blade when you make these cuts. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna try to get 11 pieces out of this, which means I'm gonna be making 10 cuts. And if you do the math, it'll come out to about one and a half inches for each piece. And the last piece will be slightly different, but to the naked eye, you won't even notice. So I'm gonna set up a stop block just so I can make these repetitive cuts. And uh, the video is sped up a little bit, so you can't really notice, but I let the blade come to a complete stop before pulling it up because if the blade's still moving and that piece is trapped in between the blade and the saw stop, it might shoot out somewhere, or ricochet around, or hit you. So. <laughs> Be sure to be very careful when doing that. But this is also where you wanna start drilling out a hole through the centers so you have a place to run the wiring later on. I did not do this uh, at this step because I have a, uh, a really long drill bit that I can use to drill out the centers of things so I can turn them into lamps. Uh, I don't get to use it very often, so I'm gonna try it out with this one. But once I have everything cut, I can begin gluing and stacking. And just like earlier, I just press down as hard as I can until they stop wiggling and cohesion sort of keeps them together until I put a clamp on there. But I'm using the cherry and the oak as a reference and the very first piece I had intentions to follow that and you'll notice I immediately messed that up. But every piece after that was aligned to the second piece. So all is well and can't really notice it again. But uh, once I have all of them put together, I'll just use your standard clamps and give it about an hour at least. Uh, I let it sit overnight, but just give it at least an hour to dry and then back on to the lead it goes. So as you can see, I finally ditched the sleeves and I'm back to using a coping bit. And the shape I'm going for here is just really subtle. It's gonna be really thick at the top and the bottom and then thinned out in the middle. I don't wanna take away from the spiral pattern that it has uh, with any uh, you know intricate lathe work or any beads or anything like that. Uh, feel free to put your own sort of twist on it, uh, pun intended, I guess, <laughs> and uh, you know do what you think looks best. But for me, I'm just gonna keep it simple. And in terms of uh, maybe a shape guide or anything like that, I'm not doing any of that. I just occasionally take a step back to look for any high spots or low spots and then uh, chisel them out. But for sanding, I'm gonna start off with 100 grit. And then as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna use about 200 or 300 grit, somewhere in between there. And then right after that, shoot all the way up to 400 to 500 grit sandpaper and then uh, this is scotch Bright pad, you can end here, it's about the equivalent of six or 700, maybe even 800, but uh, I'm going even further. This is 1000 grit sandpaper, again this is optional, and I'm going to finish it off with 4-0 or quadruple aught uh, steel wool, however you want to say that, and it is extremely smooth. I think this is the smoothest I've ever gotten anything on the lathe or any wood, period. But uh, finishing it off, I'm going to use two coats of uh, glossy polyurethane. It could be wipe on or brush on, whatever you prefer, uh, but this is how it looks when it dries. Very nice and shiny. I love it. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna finish the top layer on and uh, in the meantime I'm gonna make my base. So I'm setting my miter saw to 18 degrees and I'm gonna start cutting these triangles. That's an off cut right there, but each one of these pieces is gonna be uh, a perfect triangle, but it, ideally you more or less want a trapezoid shape where they're spaced out a little bit more so they have four sides instead of just three. Uh, I made that mistake and I ended up going back and cutting off the tips uh, just so when I put them all together like this, uh, they have uh, a space in the middle so I can run the wiring. If you are going to make a similar base, I definitely recommend giving them a little bit more length than just making triangles like this. Uh, the base I made was a little too small, so I'm going back and cutting up some of this cherry to be placed in between each of the maple pieces. It's just going to be the same width 
as well as the same thickness as the maple pieces and no special angles needed here just your standard 90 degree cut and I'm gonna go back and just place one in the middle of each one of the maple pieces which will give it a little bit larger circumference um, just barely enough for how large the lamp body is gonna be uh, I would have liked to have made it a little bit bigger but um, I was pretty happy with how it came out and uh, you know it's not gonna tip over or anything like that so I'm gonna start gluing these up uh, to help I'm just loosely fitting a rubber band around the, the outside of this and there are easier ways to do this I've heard of people using the metal uh, strap clamps or band clamps whatever you want to call them uh, that just screw together to be tightened this I, I definitely added a little too much glue this was a little messy but uh, I'm just going back and adding more rubber bands, uh, making sure all the pieces are aligned, and I'll push them down as hard as I can to make sure the bottom is as flat as possible. The top is a little uneven, that's okay, uh, but just make sure you add as many rubber bands as you can, and when you flip it over, the back should be nice and even. Uh, definitely check it before it dries so you can make any more adjustments, but now I'm gonna put on the faceplate, and I'm using a caliper to center it as much as possible, and I'm only using two screws this time, which I'll show you why in a little bit. So once those are on there as tight as possible, I'm going to screw it onto the lathe and I'm going to tighten that as much as possible, just like you would normally do. Uh, for this one though, I'm not going to use a tailstock just because I do need to work on that front face. And uh, originally I was going to keep this an octagon shape, I kind of like how it looks, but it doesn't really match with a perfectly round lamp body. So I'm just going to turn this uh, with my coving bit until it gets to be a nicely rounded cylinder. Next thing I'm going to do is shear off the face to give it a nice, flat, even surface. But once that's done and I have it where I want it, I'm going to grab a skew chisel. If you have one that's larger or smaller than this, it'll still work. I believe this one's a half an inch, but I'm just going to round it over and then add a little bit of a ledge to the top and then follow it with a little bit of a ledge at the bottom. This is something that you'd usually see done with a router. Uh, but since it's already on the lathe, this is great practice for doing little details like that. But once that's done, I'm going to sand it all the way up to 1000 grit the same way I did with the lamp body, and then that's pretty much it. I'll finish it off with a coat of polyurethane later on, but for now, I want to try and drill a hole down the side of the base for the wire to run out. And to help with that, I'm putting a 2x4 on the top of my drill press, clamping that down, and then clamping the base to that 2x4 so it has a parallel alignment to the drill bit. This all can be done with a regular drill, uh, but since I do have a drill press, I'm gonna give this a try, and you'll see the drill bit only goes in about three quarters of the way. That's about the maximum reach this drill press has, so I'm gonna have to take this contraption apart and then use a regular drill anyway. So either one will work just fine. So like I did with the lamp body, I'm just going to finish this off with two coats of glossy polyurethane. So like I said earlier, this is my ridiculously long drill bit that I rarely ever get to use. Uh, I sometimes use it to turn things into lamps, but this was a good excuse to finally use it again. But after that's done and the base is dry, I'll drill out the holes that I used for the lathe. I'm also going to countersink the holes so the screw heads have a place to sit. And I'm also making the holes in the lamp body a little bit bigger because the screws I'm using are a little bit bigger. But uh, the reason I only use those two holes is because you really only need two screws to hold it together. Uh, but what's nice about reusing those holes is it takes out all the guesswork in centering the base to the lamp body. And the fitment is incredible. I was very happy with how that turned out. So I can finally move on to wiring this up. And I'm just going to start by running the wire through the base and then up through the lamp body. The wiring I'm using can be purchased at pretty much any hardware store, it's just your standard lamp wiring. And the socket I'm using, it's called a keyless socket, uh, but that just means there's no switch because my switch is actually on the wire itself. But I'm using this uh, one and a half inch threaded tube or pipe, whatever you want to call it, uh, just to secure it into the lamp base. And I'm adding a little bit of super glue to it uh, just so it strengthens the fibers of the wood so it doesn't get yanked out or broken off or anything like that. Uh, just make sure you tighten that little screw on the bottom. 
but once it's done, I can finally start wiring up the actual socket, uh, making sure to cut away from myself very carefully to expose the wires inside. And be sure to look up the color codes for the wiring in your area. I'm in the US, uh, usually the white wire is neutral while the black one is the lead wire or the hot wire. And I'm just gonna twist the end so it makes it a little easy to wrap around the terminals on the socket. And the neutral one always goes to the silver screw while the black wire, hot wire, lead wire, whatever you wanna call it, goes to the gold one. But again, be sure to look that up for your area. And once that's finally done, I'll just pull the wire down through the bottom so the socket settles into the socket base and then I'll screw the top back on. And that's pretty much it. It is all wired up and ready to go. I'm gonna screw in a light bulb and test it out. And this is the switch that came with the wiring. Uh, it's just a simple inline switch. You can find different types at your local hardware store or you can just get a socket that already has a switch. Be sure to look for uh, the right socket though because sometimes you get a three-way socket and then you would have to get a three-way bulb. So make sure you look at that. But for a little finishing touch, I'm gonna cover up the bottom uh, where you can see the wire as well as the screws with this little piece of cherry that I had left over. Uh, if you have a little scroll saw or something you can cut that out with, that's also an option. I'm just gonna use my belt sander since it's really thin. And then I can tilt the table a little bit to chamfer the edge just to give it a little bit more of a refined look. And that's pretty much it. To attach it, I'm just gonna use a little bit of super glue, uh, which can easily be chipped off by a chisel or screwdriver or whatever. Uh, I don't foresee a reason why I would ever need to access the wire or the screw, uh, but just in case, it is removable and then I can just glue it back on. And then for a finishing touch, I'm gonna add a little bit of polyurethane and once that dries, I'll add these little rubber feet to counteract the added piece of wood there. And I added five of them, one every other space. But beyond that, that's all you gotta do and your lamp is done. Alrighty folks, and there you have it. A very basic beginner's guide on a segmented lamp. If I can do it, you absolutely can too. So give it a try, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comments. Be sure to check out these products. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.